He's so concerned about it. He got to go public on Twitter. First one to shoots a dusty bitch. Yeah. How about first one to tweet asking for charity on how I fight you is a little bitch. And guess what? You already lost. You already lost that. Oh, you don't want me to take it to the ground? Oh, okay. Let's just fight wherever you want. Here, I'll tell you what. Would you prefer if I tie my right hand behind my back? Would that give you a better chance of winning, Corner? Would that little guy, you want me to tie my hand behind my back, huh? How about you get a complete game? Because you reek of insecurity, okay? Right? Don't type to me unless you have something, something like a man would say. Stop talking to me like a fucking little girl, dude. Stop talking to me like a little girl. I'm training, dude. We've got a big fight here coming up in a couple weeks. You should be less focused on asking me not to fight you in certain areas of the octagon and more focused on your cardio and your calf kick defense. Because if I remember correctly, last time you couldn't walk for a couple months afterwards, right? How's your forehead, by the way? How's your forehead? I seem to remember breaking my knuckles on your forehead. I didn't even tell anyone because I thought that would be too embarrassing. I didn't want to add that on on top of the fact that I went public and told everybody that you were gonna skirt on that 500K that you uh, promised to deliver to my charity. That was cute. Then you, do, I mean, you still donated it, you know, to the Boys and Girls Club in Louisiana after I humiliated you. But I just didn't think that there was a need to tack on top of that the fact that my, whatever you call these knuckles, were broken and I broke them on your face. So anyway, hope that's healed up nice because I don't want you to have any excuses the next time I break your face. All right, Jesse on fire. Welcome back to the channel. Now we're going to talk about Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor because that fight is coming up real quick here. And you know what? I haven't talked about that fight very much on this channel. I talked about it on Instagram, but I've made some adjustments to my uh, viewpoint since then. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. That's kind of going to be the point of this video is why the thing I said on Instagram, and I'll tell you what that was in case you guys missed it, is maybe not going to be correct. And it has everything to do with mental game, right? Now, if we're talking about the mental game between Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier, it must mean that I think Conor's going to win, right? Like, of course, Conor has the mental edge over Dustin, right? That's not where this is going. That is not where this is going, which is surprising. Surprising enough that I'm going to do a video on it. Now, if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. If you're new to this channel, that's cool. Welcome. Welcome. I like to make it uh, entertaining, you know, like... Uh, I may not be the number one analyst in the world yet, yet, but I am the number one analyst in my mom's heart. And that is a good enough reason for you to subscribe. Bet you that's not, thought that was going on. Bet you did not think that was going there. Wow, I am struggling with the English language right now. But anyway, um, so also real quick, before I do start this yesterday, I did a video about uh, Francis Ngannou's contract details and I wanted to let you guys know that the details were wrong. Just kidding. They're totally right. But what I did want to do is apologize for the sound quality of that video because uh, I got a new audio set up and you know, as everything that I pay someone else to do, it never gets done correctly. It's unbelievable. Every single time I try to take a, take a shortcut on anything, the person I hire to do the thing that I don't want to learn how to do, fucks it up. 100% of the time, it's unbelievable. It's crazy how consistent that is. And then I always end up having to do all the research, do, do it myself, and then I make it work. Anyway, so I apologize. That was a uh, shanty. I didn't even realize that it was messed up until the video already had 4,000 views. So it is what it is. Anyway, um, so at the end of this video, if I remember, I'm going to tell you guys about a little fight I got into today, huh? Little, little squabble, kind of. But uh, I might forget. <clears throat> anyway, so here's the deal. So the way that this whole thing started, or at least the way that my opinion started and then how it changed, um, had to do... First of all, with I rewatched the first, not the first fight. Jeez, I know everybody broke my balls in the last one. The most recent fight, okay? So the second fight, the first of these two that are, you know, the second one's about to happen or whatever. The one that happened in January, right? I watched it again. I hadn't watched it since January. And I realized it is crazy how differently you'll interpret a fight while you're watching it, if you're emotionally invested in it, or for any reason, actually, you know? No, more actually if you're emotionally invested in it, one way or the other. If it's someone that you really like or two guys that you really like or you have money on the line, whatever, you're, you're, so, you're so anxious about what the outcome's gonna be that you don't objectively see what's going on as well as you do when you watch it the second time, knowing what's gonna happen so you can really just kind of take in all the information. And here's what I saw. I saw a few things. I saw a lot of things. But the main thing that I made the video based on, the one that I did on Instagram, 
was how impressed with Connor's boxing I was. It was like, wow. I, the first time I watched the fight, I thought their boxing was relatively even. You know, I was like, I, like the way I interpreted it was like, wow, they were really even on the feet. Uh, and then Dustin, you know, broke him down with, with leg kicks and, and that's what it was, right? That was basically as deep as it went. He broke him down with leg kicks, but they were relatively even uh, on the feet. When I watched it the next time, this, this most recent time, Connor's boxing is incredible. I mean, really, really good, really good. And, and I know people are gonna wanna be like, oh, what are you talking about? Dustin, Dustin, he, Dustin was landed on Connor. That's true, that's true. Dustin caught Connor with one check hook that was really impressive. Aside from that, what he was catching him with were the kinds of things that you're gonna catch a guy with when the guy's entire striking methodology is to set up not, you know, not use traditional like blocking, but get one millimeter from the end of your punch and then come back over the top and counter you, right? Like the reason Connor's so dangerous as a counter puncher is because he's so precise with how he slips and counters, right? And so a person like that, the margin of error, I mean, he is literally trying to get to where your punch would have landed if it was this close, you know, just a little bit closer and he's coming right back over the top, right? The momentum of your strike, and then he's over the top. So if you miss by you're a matter of a half an inch, then you land, right? But the key is to not let them land solid. So yeah, Connor, you know, had some punches land, but none of them were super solid until the check hook was good, and then the punches at the end once his, uh, once his leg was broken down. But you take those out of the equation and you look at Connor's ability to land and move laterally and then like land these, dude, he is so accurate. His, 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 it's unbelievable how accurate his punches are. He's, he's tremendous. He really is, man. His boxing's so good. And so I was just watching that. I was like, man, I'm like, and I, I mean, his body looks completely, completely different than it did before this layoff. And that leads me to believe that his weakness of cardio is not a weakness anymore. And I'm, I'm speculating there, right? I'm completely speculating. But I do know that Connor is a light of, you know, well, all the things he is, the guy is, he's a lot of things, right? The guy's a lot of things. He's inspiring. He's also the opposite of what you would want to be. You know, you're inspired like, wow, that's exactly what I want to be. And he's also simultaneously the, ex the complete opposite of what you would want to be in many ways. He's a very complicated guy. He's a mixed bag. But one thing that he definitely is, is he's a lifetime martial artist. And he is a person where if he recognizes a weakness, he's going to work on it. I mean, just plain and simple. So if you think that Connor watching all the MMA media or and also being in the octagon and feeling himself run out of gas and then, you know, that feeling where you're, you know, kind of walking through mud, trying to make your body move when you're so tired. If you, you think that like, he's not aware of that, right? Like he's not aware that he had cardio problems and you don't think he hasn't been working on that. I would bet my life that that's not correct, that he's been working extraordinarily hard on, on improving his cardio. And the thing is, if you look at the Khabib fight, I mean, he had every reason to be really tired. Like Khabib made him work, dude. Khabib made him absolutely work. And if you look at the third round, Connor was still moving well. Khabib's just a better fighter. Khabib was just a much better fighter that night. It really wasn't about Connor's gas tank. You know, I mean, obviously he's not as fresh in the fourth round as he is in the first, but you didn't see him gas out and his body looks even different since then. And so my hypothesis is that Connor has probably got gas for five rounds now is, I mean, that's, I, I believe that. I believe that he's probably got gas for five rounds. And then, so, you know, you really look at the fight itself. How did Connor lose? He lost two calf kicks. Now the, the Southpaw thing is not good. You know, but I guarantee he's been working on how am I going to manage these calf kicks that I know for 100% sure are coming. If he's got an answer to him, then he's going to be in a really good position to win the fight. That's basically where my where my head was at. I don't think he's going to run out the whole thing of like, oh, the later in the in the fight it goes, the better it is for Dustin. Everyone's saying that based on Connor's gas tank and, and Dustin being able to go five hard. I don't think that's going to be a factor. And... Um, you know, if you take, if he has the ability to, to check leg kicks, I, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly what he's going to do, but if he's got a game plan that's going to work for the calf kicks, then I think he'll be in a good position to win. That's where I was at, right? That was, that was my breakdown. Now, the other thing though, is that the mental game 
always matters, right? Where's a guy at psychologically? And, you know, Connor's been locked away. He's not doing media. You don't really know where he's at. He's not doing a bunch of psychological games with Dustin like you would have expected. But when I saw this exchange on Twitter, I was like, wait a minute, right? Like if there's a, if there's a, a power struggle going on between two fighters and Connor is one of the fighters, the only time I've ever seen anyone handle that well was Khabib, right? Like if Connor was actually trying to put psychological pressure on a person, the only person I've seen stand up to it was Khabib. And obviously Khabib is Khabib. He's a piece of ice. But I've never seen anyone get the better of Connor when they're playing games, right? Like I've never, I've never read an exchange and gone, whoa, this guy's kind of Connor's daddy. Like, I think this, this is, this guy might, this, I mean, I think he's his daddy. I think, I think he thinks Connor's his little bitch, you know? Like, I think he thinks Connor's his little bitch. And when I read that exchange right there, the one that we're talking about, first one to shoot is a dusty bitch. And then Dustin's response to that, which we'll read right now, I was like, oh shit. Dustin thinks Connor's his bitch. And not in like a, I'm taking him lightly way, but like in a, you aren't shit anymore to me way. Like you're, oh cool, you have money? Oh, you have money? Congratulations, Connor. That's great. You think that money's gonna help you when you get locked in the cage with me? How do you think that's gonna go? You think that that's gonna, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna buy your way out of that? You think you're gonna buy your way out of the calf kicks? You think you're gonna buy your way out of forgetting that I broke my knuckles on your forehead right before you were knocked out? You think that's, you're gonna buy your way out? Because money don't mean shit in there. You can come in on fucking eight yachts. You can buy 15 watches and you're still gonna end up locked in the octagon with me. And that is basically how I read this exchange. So Connor, you know, he said, he said to Dustin, first one to shoot is a dusty bitch. Now, you also gotta keep in mind, you never know with Connor, dude. Like he might be saying, first one to shoot's a dusty bitch and Connor is planning on shooting on Dustin. You know what? God, I don't want a tangent, but I don't want to forget this. Really quick before I read this, I, did, I also wanted to say this about the first fight. Dustin fought an exceptional fight. Now, I mean, I guess that goes without saying. He knocked out Connor, but I mean, like, strategically, he fought an excellent fight where he used Connor's mouth against him. And I'll tell you exactly what I mean there. I never talk shit. When I, if it's like a real, like if it's like a real contest that I'm actually concerned about the outcome, and I'm you know if I'm gonna play against my buddies in golf, I'm gonna you know it's something that doesn't really matter. Of course, I'm gonna talk a lot of shit, right? But if it's something where the outcome actually matters and I'm serious and I'm steel-eyed for it, I never talk shit. I don't do it because I know about myself that that does not make me perform better. It makes me perform worse. And because if you make a lot of outlandish statements, right? If you're like, I'm going to crush this guy. And then they're giving you even, even feedback, you know, like you're, you're pressing them and they're pressing you just as hard. You know, you find yourself like, man, in the back of your mind, you're like, shit, I said I was going to crush this guy. He's fighting me pretty fucking good. You know, as opposed to just being in there and being like, wow, this guy's tough. And you didn't set any expectations on yourself that are going to mind fuck you. Right? So Connor says he doesn't think that Dustin's going to last a minute. Right? He doesn't think, there's no way that Connor lasts a minute. I don't think, I don't believe he's gonna be able to last one round with me. I don't think he's gonna be able to last one round. So Dustin's like, well, I mean, obviously, you know, I need to make sure I'm last a round. But also, you gotta do whatever you can to last a round because then Connor made a claim that he didn't deliver on, right? Connor said something, he did not deliver on it. And so that just start to shake his confidence because he probably really believed he was gonna knock you out in the, in the first, you know, first round. And so Dustin does a little bit of, you know, does his feeling out process and boom, shoots on Connor, puts him on his butt. And then, you know, it's not, I mean, whether you hold him down or not, you're, you're just trying to eat through time. You're just trying to eat through time. You just want to get through the first round without getting seriously hurt. And, and I would guarantee that that was part of what, what Dustin's, you know, Dustin's game plan went out, obviously. And, uh, and then chop at the legs. He fought a great fight. Anyway, okay, I apologize. Now we're going back to uh, Connor's my bitch. So, uh, so Connor says, first one to first one to shoot is a dusty bitch. And uh, Dustin responded with, "Is this not even on it?" Oh, that's so terrible. He said, basically, I'm gonna have to paraphrase because I don't want to edit this together. But Dustin basically said, "Hey, bud." This is mixed martial arts. First one to shoots a dusty bitch. How about you get a complete game? How about you get a complete game? 
right? This reeks of insecurity to me. That's the, I know that was the final sentence. This reeks of insecurity. He said, MMA is a complete martial, it is a complete sport. You know, basically it was like, what, you don't have a ground game by now? You know, this reeks of insecurity. And I read that, I was like, damn, that is a gangster ass response. Like that's a gangster ass response, calm, and really challenges him. Like, oh, first one he shoots a dusty bitch is like, oh yeah? Oh, you worried about my ground game, little guy? You worried I'm gonna shoot on your corner? You worried I'm gonna shoot on your corner? Because you don't have a ground game? I thought you brown belt, corner. Why are you worried about getting shot on, dude? Huh? You so concerned about it, you gotta go public on Twitter. First one to shoots a dusty bitch. Yeah? How about first one to tweet asking for charity on how I fight you is a little bitch. And guess what, you already lost. You already fucking lost that. Oh, you don't want me to take it to the ground? Oh, okay. Let's just fight wherever you want. Here, I'll tell you what. Would you prefer if I tie my right hand behind my back? Would that give you a better chance of winning, Corner? Would that little guy, you want me to tie my hand behind my back, huh? How about you get a complete game because you reek of insecurity, okay? Right? Don't type to me unless you have something, something like a man would say. Stop talking to me like a fucking little girl, dude. Stop talking to me like a little girl. I'm training, dude. We've got a big fight here coming up in a couple weeks. You should be less focused on asking me not to fight you in certain areas of the octagon and more focused on your cardio and your calf kick defense. Because if I remember correctly, last time you couldn't walk for a couple months afterwards, right? How's your forehead, by the way? How's your forehead? I seem to remember breaking my knuckles on your forehead. I didn't even tell anyone because I thought that would be too embarrassing. I didn't want to add that on on top of the fact that I went public and told everybody that you were gonna skirt on that 500K that you uh, promised to deliver to my charity. That was cute. Then you, do, I mean, you still donated it, you know, to the Boys and Girls Club in Louisiana after I humiliated you. But I just didn't think that there was a need to tack on top of that the fact that my, whatever you call these knuckles, were broken and I broke them on your face, so. Anyway, hope that's healed up nice because I don't want you to have any excuses the next time I break your fucking face. So that's how I read that. That's how I read his response. And I was like, damn, Connor's a little bitch to him. Like Dustin thinks he's a little bitch. And then, Con and then so, so they asked him in this interview about it. And Dustin, and Dustin says, uh, the good thing about it is, it, the good thing about this one is if it's crazy Connor again, I don't give a fuck. I really don't care. And in the last one too, if he'd have gone crazy, I'd have been all right. Mentally, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm a grown man and I know what matters and I know what I can control. I just don't, I just don't beat myself up mentally like I used to with the critics. I think it's gonna be crazy Connor again, I'm pretty sure. I wouldn't say, wait, what? I wouldn't say funny, but it's crazy. But how crazy can you be? You got knocked out last time. We put you on airplane mode in front of the world in Abu Dhabi. What can you say? We put you on airplane mode. Sorry, that was the first time I was reading that, obviously, if you couldn't tell. I'm not actually illiterate. Uh, we put you on airplane mode in front of the entire world in Abu Dhabi. What can you say? Damn. 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 Isn't he the one who's always preaching about the flow, the full martial arts, no holds barred, no rules, the ultimate fighting? When he's talking about boxing and stuff, right? How about the first one to get taken down as a dusty bitch? This is mixed martial arts. Put it all together. This reeks of insecurity to me. There it is. Fucking awesome, dude. So yeah, I, uh, I am not confident Connor's gonna win anymore because of that, you know, because of that, that, Reed's pretty crystal clear who's got the mental edge right now, right? We put you on fucking airplane mode last time we fought, pal. Anyway, uh, oh, so well, that's what I've got on that. But if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. Tell your friends. Peace.